Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, it's, it's great to get a chance to come back down to the floor to visit with my colleagues and talk about an issue that I've uh, been raising seven or eight weeks in a row. Uh, this I'll have a little more extended time to go over uh, what uh, has transpired over the past six to seven months, and that's that this country really needs to address this high-level nuclear waste problem in this country. And I'm glad uh, to be joined with some of my colleagues who I'll yield to in a couple minutes. But just to uh, start in a synopsis, uh, based upon the areas of the countries that we, uh, parts of the country that we visited, um, for us to move past the log jam that's in the, our, the other body, we have to find 60 uh, senators who will vote to, to move forward what we, now, what we know is federal law. The N Nuclear Waste Policy Act of 1982 recognized and determined that Yucca Mountain would be the national repository for high-level nuclear waste. So I think a lot of folks would say, well, so if it's the law, why aren't we there? Well, the reason we're not there now is because uh, the majority leader of the Senate has blocked it along with the President of the United States. And uh, so this time is being spent to help educate the American public, Mr. Speaker, on where is the high-level nuclear waste, what communities, what states are affected, and what senators should be held somewhat accountable for the positions they take as far as high-level nuclear waste. So on the chart to the far, my far left, throughout the, uh, this last half a year, we've got, um, we need 60 votes. We've got uh, at least 27 senators who we know already support this based upon votes or public statements. We have eight that really have not had a chance to address this by a vote or haven't made a public statement on it yet. And we have seven nays or seven no votes. So with that, uh, just because I appreciate my colleagues taking time out, uh, I'd like to first yield to my colleague from uh, the state of Illinois, no disrespect to my colleague from the state of Georgia, um, to, uh, to go into a, a discussion about one of, the, one of the areas that we addressed, uh, one of the first sites we talked about, I figured I better come forward and talk about my own state. If I'm gonna talk about other states, I better talk about the state of Illinois. The state of Illinois is a 50% of our electricity is uh, generated by nuclear power. We're one of the biggest nuclear power states in the country. Uh, we picked a facility that's actually closed which is the Zion power plant. And with that, I yield to my colleague, uh, um, Mr. Dole, to kind of talk about Zion, the state of Illinois, and its location. Well, I want to thank the gentleman for yielding and certainly for taking this issue up, which I think is so very, very critical, not only for just the state of Illinois, but for facilities all across the country. As we look at how we can best store um, what I will, the, the used material from the nuclear facilities. So the spent fuel rods, more specifically. If you'll notice here in, in Zion, which is uh, just north of the district, but certainly affects the district uh, just north of Chicago in the 10th district where I represent, uh, it's right on the shores of Lake Michigan. The Great Lakes, 95% of all fresh surface water in the United States are from the Great Lakes. And when we look at the amount of drinking water that the state of Illinois uses, it's an enormous percentage that are coming from the Great Lakes. And yet, in our infinite wisdom, we've decided that we want to store the fuel rods just a sheer several hundred feet from the shores of Lake Michigan, five feet above the water table. And if we take a look at, at Yucca Mountain, the reason why Yucca Mountain was chosen was Yucca Mountain is uniquely suited as the premier place, if we were to store any place, spent fuel rods, this would be the ideal location. A thousand feet below the ground, a thousand feet above the water table, a very dry, arid environment. And correct me if I'm wrong, what, where's the local, the, the nearest inhabitants of Yucca Mountain? Is it 100 miles? Well, the, uh, the uh, city of, of Las Vegas, which is the major metropolitan area, is 100 miles from Yucca Mountain. Uh, I, what people have a hard time understanding about the nuclear 
test area. This is where the nuclear test site was. Uh, federal government owns numerous parcels of land around Yucca Mountain. Uh, the communities right outside the reservation, and I think the, uh, the whole test site area is like the size of uh, New Hampshire to the like. But the communities, what's interesting about this debate, the communities right outside the gate are fully supportive of Yucca Mountain being the repository for high-level nuclear waste in the state of, and why do I know that? Because I visited them, I, 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 I've been in their communities, I went to the community center, they welcomed me, and we talked about how this was important for the country and their local communities. This is, this is absolutely critical for the country, and we look at, at just the state of Illinois, the state of Illinois has got 13 commercial reactors at seven sites across the state of Illinois, our neighbors to the north have three commercial reactors operating on two different sites, both of those on Lake Michigan. And so when we look at, at the 8.5 million people that rely on the drinking water, much less the recreation, the fishing, all the different uh, forms of commerce that happen on our Great Lakes, this is something that I think is critical. Uh, I, the, the senators from both the state of Illinois and the state of Wisconsin have all in, been in favor uh, of trying to utilize this facility out at Yucca Mountain, and it just makes sense. Why do we want to store? Mr. Speaker, why would we want to store over a thousand metric tons of nuclear waste hundreds of feet away from the greatest source of fresh surface water in our nation? It is indeed the jewel of our ecosystem. This is something that we need to protect, something that we need to have a long-term vision for. And yet what we don't need to do is have scattered sites all across our country of nuclear waste that has a greater potential for disasters to happen. They're being stored right now in casts that are about five feet above uh, the groundwater, above the water table. And what we'd like to do is take it a thousand feet above the water table, a thousand feet below ground. This is something that absolutely makes perfect sense. And I, I, I welcome the gentleman's uh, colloquy in terms of talking about not only this site, and I thank you for bringing it up on week after week, trying to make sure that we try to get through to our colleagues on the other side of the building to make sure they can move this common sense piece of legislation forward. How much have we spent already at Yucca Mountain? I think it's in the $14 billion range. The, 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 my colleague's correct. We've already spent about $14.5 billion in the uh, research, the development, the uh, exploration, the uh, testing, uh, a lot of money, time, effort, and some of our greatest minds have been involved. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I don't really think you have to be one of the greatest minds. I mean, the point I always say is common sense says in the desert underneath a mountain. Isn't that where you want, would want high-level nuclear waste versus right, right, right off the shore of Lake Michigan? It seems certainly like common sense to me, and I certainly applaud the gentleman's efforts. And uh, thank you for giving me the time. And I just want to make sure that not only... This isn't just important for the folks in the state of Illinois and the folks in Wisconsin and the people in Michigan that are surrounding the Great uh, Lakes, and it's specifically Lake Michigan. It's all the Great Lakes, and it's, and it's not just in Illinois. There are nuclear power facilities all across the country. We need to have a safe, secure way to be able to store these spent fuel rods, and I think Yucca Mountain has been proven to be the place to do it, and I think we should move forward on it. Be thank before the gentleman yields, could he, uh, can you tell me the disp disposition of... Uh, Zion power plant what's going on there right now the Zion power plant has actually been decommissioned at this point in time so right now they are are putting it in mothballs they are taking uh, the spent fuel rods they're in casts they are being transported and in, into a location that's on the site it's just literally a few hundred feet away from the beaches there and probably about 50 or 20 to 30 miles north of the city of Chicago uh, this is not the place that we want to be storing uh, spent fuel rods, and so Zion, uh, you know, was a, a great source of, of electricity for the people around the area, and has been decommissioned over the last two years. Uh, so it is now sitting idle, and, and uh, they're trying to go through the process of dismantling it. Yeah, and I, I think I briefly tried to show this article from the Salt Lake Tribune, dated December 8th, which talks about some of the reactor parts who are are going to go out to Utah, but it's it's. What the article ends up saying is the site will not, however, take the Illinois plant's used fuel rods. The United States currently has no site to dispose of spent fuel 
from commercial reactors, a form of high-level nuclear waste. So if we don't have a location, where is that high-level nuclear waste, the spent fuel, going to remain? It's going to remain, not, I mean, seriously, right in the middle of a high population area, hundreds of feet away from the jewel of our ecosystem in the Great Lakes and Lake Michigan. It's the wrong place for it to be. Common sense would say, let's move it out to a place, a location just like Yucca Mountain, $14 billion of research and, and dollars have gone into the site. Let's put it 1,000 feet below uh, the ground, 1,000 feet above the water table in an arid environment. It's absolutely perfect for it. It's something that we should move forward on. It's in the best interest and the safety of the American public to do something along these lines. And, and I'm told that Zion is, what, 40 miles from downtown Chicago? 40 miles from downtown Chicago which obviously, so we're talking in the greater Chicago area, you probably have about six and a half uh, to seven million people. Certainly not what we want to have in terms of these nuclear. And the reason why this is important, unfortunately, is because of Fukushima Daiichi in Japan, which, which is a, a, a great tragedy. Uh, a lot of people think about the containment issue, which was, has always been the fear. Part of the Fukushima Daiichi problem was the spent fuel in the, in the pools, which might be a, a bigger environmental disaster uh, uh, based upon uh, things that cannot be planned. That's why we continue to push this. I appreciate my colleague coming down. And I, th I thank help. the gentleman for allowing me to, to, to have some time with you today and, and again for talking about this very important issue. And now I, I, I'm going to turn and, and join my colleague from Georgia, who also serves with me on the Energy and Commerce Committee. We, uh, we have uh, jurisdiction over this. My subcommittee is the environment and the economy. Uh, I deal with a lot of the dis waste disposal issues, nuclear waste being one of those. Uh, when my uh, colleague has followed this issue uh, as long as I have, um, and, and last time um, I uh, came to the floor, I, I mentioned uh, a couple facilities in Georgia but uh, the, the one that I have uh, highlighted is, if it's here, if not, we're going to get it up to my colleague, is, uh, is uh, Savannah River. And as I finish, I'll get it up to my colleague. But the point we're trying to make today is, uh, here you have Yucca Mountain, which is in a desert and a mountain. And then you have nuclear waste all over this country. Look at this one, Savannah River, right next to the Savannah River. At Yucca Mountain, we have no nuclear waste on site. At Savannah River, there's 6,300 canisters of waste on site. Uh, the waste would be stored, as my colleague Bob Dole said, 1,000 feet underground, where at Savannah River, it's stored right below the ground. At Yucca Mountain, 1,000 feet above the water table. At Savannah River, it would be 0 to 160 feet above the water table. Uh, the waste at Yucca Mountain is 100 miles from the Colorado River, at, well, you can see, adjacent to the Savannah River. So uh, I pr appreciate uh, my colleague, uh, Congressman Gingrey, joining me, and I'd like to yield to him uh, to uh, come, go into the colloquy. Well, Mr. Speaker, I, I'm glad to join my colleague from Illinois, the subcommittee chairman on energy and commerce of the environment and economy uh, subcommittee on this very important subject. Uh, our colleagues from Illinois uh, specifically point out uh, the existing uh, situation in their state in regard to these nuclear reactor sites uh, in Illinois and what they do with spent nuclear fuel. Uh, the, the poster that uh, the gentleman has presented in regard to my great state uh, and my neighboring state of South Carolina uh, in regard to what we're faced with is, is equally as telling. Uh, I think it might be instructive, Mr. Speaker, if I uh, go back, take a, a walk down memory lane just a little bit in regard to uh, my background. Uh, when I was uh, growing up in, in North Augusta, South Carolina, uh, this central Savannah River area, which includes uh, uh, the, the southern part, if you will, or, or the, the, the western part of South Carolina and the eastern part of Georgia are separated by the Savannah River. And uh, there was a facility built 
on the South Carolina side uh, in, a, in a town called Ellington, South Carolina by, back in 1950. Uh, I, I hate to tell my age, but I was seven or eight at the time. Uh, and Mr. Speaker, my parents owned a little motel uh, on the river. Uh, they very insightly named uh, the mom and pop 25 unit motel, the Riviera Motel. Uh, and during the construction of this nuclear plant, uh, there were 50,000, 50,000 construction workers involved in that facility, constructing that facility for three years. And I can't tell you how happy my parents were every evening when the sun went down to turn on that no vacancy sign at the Riviera Motel uh, because all of these workers stayed with us. Uh, we didn't get rich. They were only paying $8 a night. But, but it's just to, to point out the importance uh, of jobs in, in the nuclear industry and the capability of, of, of expanding uh, our employment sector uh, in this particular uh, lane of energy. This country right now, today, uh, I'm told that we produce about 20 percent of our electricity from nuclear power. In the state of Georgia, it's 24 percent, not much higher. We have two sites, four reactors. We're in the process uh, of adding two more uh, right on the Savannah, Savannah River, as the gentleman from Illinois points out, at Plant Vogel. Uh, and, and hopefully, we'll get that done. But the problem which the gentleman is bringing before all of our colleagues uh, and hopefully a lot of other uh, folks that are uh, viewing or listening uh, is why is it for the last 30 years we have had no nu nuclear sites? We've literally had a moratorium uh, and you have about 103 across the country, those in Illinois, those in Georgia, and what are they doing with this spent nuclear fuel? It is either shallow underground in pool tanks, uh, not very much above the water table, or even worse, above ground in, in these concrete and steel containers. Talk about a risk of terrorism, of, a, of an attack in the radiation release. So uh, the gentleman uh, is, is, uh, is so generous to ask me to join in this colloquy about the issue. I I'm looking forward to continuing as I yield back to him to discuss the real problem here, what to do with that spent fuel. And I yield back to my colleague. Um, I'm, again, I appreciate you uh, joining me today. I want to quote from a uh, Chicago Tribune editorial uh, of March 19th. And I'll just do three short paragraphs. Um, here's why that is potentially a bigger problem than a meltdown. In the Japanese reactors, as in many U.S. reactors, the spent fuel is housed in large water-filled pools in the reactor building, but outside the concrete and steel fortress that surrounds the reactor core. If the core melts down, any radiation release is likely to be bottled up by the containment vessel. Not so for the spent fuel pools, which often contain far more radioactive material than in the reactor. If the water that keeps those rods cool drains or boils away, the used fuel can catch fire. Result, a dangerous plume of extremely high radioactivity spewed into the air. Obvious question, why do nuclear plants store spent fuel that way? Obvious answer, in the U.S., Yucca Mountain isn't open. In the 1980s, the federal government launched a plans to ship nuclear waste to a starge layer carved into the mountain in Nevada and let it slowly and harmlessly decay. Uh, so our, our discussion here is about uh, there are benefits of nuclear power and if you're a climate change person and you don't want carbon dioxide and you still want a lot of electricity so for us to, to uh, use in our new technology, you, you have to have a, a a generator um, but in this case it's the used fuel not properly well, I shouldn't say it is properly stored but it would be better stored under a single repository in the desert underneath a mountain for all the reasons that we're, he you're talking about 
four reactors right now in Georgia, two more coming online, that's six. Illinois has 11. Uh, there are over 104 across this whole country. And of course, we spent our time talking about the used nuclear fuel from the industry. But when I started this debate about what do we do with high-level nuclear waste, I started with a DOE facility that goes back to the World War II and the development of the nuclear bomb and the Fat Man bomb, which was built at Hanford, Washington. And, the, and all that waste going all the way back to World War II is in Hanford. Yeah. And there are 53 million gallons of nuclear waste on site, buried right, under, right off the surface of the ground in tanks that are 750,000 to a million gallons each. Only about 40 of them, there's over 100, only about 40 of them are, are, uh, are double line. That means the rest are not. Some are leaking. It, that, if the gentleman would yield. I would yield. And, and, and the question of who is responsible in Hanford or in Barnwell, South Carolina or, or New Ellington uh, to guard and protect. Uh, a tremendous burden on the states, but even if the Department of Homeland Security, uh, maybe they do some of the uh, oversight and, and protection of, of these sites, but 103 different sites across the country, how much simpler, how much safer, how much cheaper if they had one site to protect, that being 100 miles from Las Vegas at Yucca Mountain? And it's continuing to speak on this issue of just uh, looking at it to kind of get away from just the nuclear generating uh, profit sector to address our responsibility as stewards of a, of a program that was developed to stop World War II and then eventually remedy these environments that have environmental impact. Yucca Mountain, the, the waste storage plan for Hanford, and I just toured it this year, uh, the, the, the plan to, to gather up the uh, deliquify, reprocess, put them in these canisters is designed to go to one location. You know what that loca location is? That location is Yucca Mountain. So our failure to move forward, or our failure, actually the, the uh, other chamber's failure, the leader of the Senate's failure, the President of the United States' failure, just tells Washington State what? Guess what? You've got this high-level nuclear waste that's leaking, that's close to the Columbia River, and just deal with it. Just deal with it. And I find that unacceptable after, as uh, my colleague from uh, 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 Illinois said, $14.5 billion we spent to prepare this site at Yucca Mountain only to have it stop for political purposes. Well, you know, and the gentleman will yield to me again, and I appreciate the opportunity to discuss this, because uh, what year uh, did, did we, we commission uh, a group to study? Uh, and there were a number of, of potential sites for permanent storage from all these 103 facilities, one unified central site. Uh, and I'm, I'm relatively sure the gentleman can correct me if I'm wrong, but it was at least a five-year process before it was settled uh, in 1987, and Congress at that time designated Yucca Mountain as the sole site for a permanent high-level nuclear waste repository after years of contentious application. So this is set in law, is it not? And I'll yield back to the gentleman. The Nuclear Waste Policy Act of 1982 established Yucca Mountain as the national repository for high-level nuclear waste. And again, for the educational purposes, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, that is spent fuel. Sometimes it's spent nuclear waste from our Department of Defense, now controlled by the Department of Energy sites like Hanford. Our argument is let's consolidate this waste safely, securely at one location so that 
as my colleague from Georgia says, we, we can more safely, I think effectively, I think efficiently, I think cost effectively, manage, protect, and eventually try to remediate some of the damage that's been done over decades because of this high level nuclear waste being located all over the country. The gentleman will yield back to me uh, for, for a comment or two. Uh, I have had the opportunity uh, as a member of Congress and in particular as a member of the Energy and Commerce Committee, Mr. Speaker, to travel uh, to France and Scandinavia recently uh, to look at uh, their uh, nuclear facility, uh, but in particular their ability to reprocess uh, in France and their ability to store uh, in Scandinavia. Uh, we have described a little bit uh, about the, the, the physiognomy, if you will, of uh, the Yucca Mountain area, the nuclear test site in that arid desert of uh, uh, northern, northern Nevada. Uh, and they have, in Scandinavia, have, have developed a, a laboratory, I think they call it the CLAD, uh, but it is, it is literally 1,400 meters below ground in bedrock. Uh, and, and you can drive 18-wheel trucks uh, down to, uh, something like two miles deep in the ground uh, where their spent nuclear fuel is stored. And, and that's the model, and that's really what we are looking at and planning for uh, at Yucca Mountain. Nothing, really nothing could be safer in regard to storage. Uh, and, and, and the other thing is while we were in France, we looked at a facility where they take that spent fuel, Mr. Speaker, and they reprocess it. So at some point in the future, if we decide and we have the technology to do that, uh, that, that source of spent nuclear fuel that's stored in Yucca Mountain could be used to, to uh, uh, recycle re, uh, uh, and to get more energy uh, out of this spent nuclear fuel. So, I mean, I, I, I just, it's beyond me how a, a president by executive order uh, can stop the will of Congress. And maybe we ought to talk about that in regard to things like the Keystone Energy Pipeline and expand this discussion a little further. I'll, I'll yield back to my colleague. Again, I thank my uh, friend from Georgia um, uh, for, for helping out on the, on the special order and, and just addressing the issue of recycling. Uh, what do we do? Because those of us who follow the, uh, the, the nuclear fuel cycle, most people want it closed. And how do you get it closed? Um, you get it closed by getting as much energy out of, out of the fuel rods as you can. You do that by reprocessing, but it, it would make sense that if there was someone who's going to attempt to do that, that the nuclear fuel would be close by. Uh, and there's probably some discussions about if we were going to have a reprocessing facility sometime in this country, like France, where would you locate it? Where would it, where, where would it be situated? I, I mean, I'm just a layman in this debate, but I think you would want it close by where the nuclear material is, the, the material that you want to use to reprocess, to, to create uh, fuel. So I, I can't speak for the entire body. I do know that the House spoke on Yucca Mountain and, and bringing a fine finality to this through a 297 vote. 297 members voted to, uh, to uh, ensure that we had the final dollars to do the final scientific study to move this process forward. And in that debate, it just showed that the will of the House was supportive. And this is a bipartisan. I mean, we don't have 297 or whatever the number is, members who are just Republicans. We have 242. That means we brought a lot of our colleagues on the other side on this debate. Some of those really believe that the future is reprocessing and that we ought to be exploring that. And it's much better to have them located where you can recover that material. Uh, if my colleague from Georgia wouldn't mind, I see I'm, we're also joined by uh, another colleague from Illinois. Uh, people wonder why we take up this cause. It's because we're a big nuclear state uh, that is uh, about 50% of our electricity generation. 
Uh, I do a lot of coal. Coal is very important to me, but we are a nuclear power state, which means we have a lot of sites, a lot of reactors, and we have a lot of nuclear waste. So I'd like to yield some time to my colleague and thank you for coming down. Well, I, I thank my colleague from Illinois. Uh, uh, and I just want to say thank you for your leadership on this issue, uh, among many other things. And this is an issue that's very important. It's important not just for the country. It's important for my state. It's important for my district. Uh, the 11th district in Illinois, it's kind of north central Illinois. Uh, it's a beautiful place. Come spend money there sometime. Um, but we have three nuclear power plants there. Uh, and in fact, at, at each nuclear power plant, of course, there is stored nuclear waste on site. Uh, and then we also have an area which was intended to be early on uh, the original site of what was going to be nuclear reprocessing in this country. And uh, now it is really just a pool with uh, stored nuclear waste in it. Uh, so in, in one district, I think there's 131 locations across the country where we're storing this nuclear waste. And uh, in, my, in my district alone, we have four of those. So this is an issue that's very important, uh, not just to the people of Illinois, to the people of the 11th district, and mainly to the people of this country. I mean, Yucca Mountain is, is what the, the fund was created for this sole purpose of finding a place, a safe place, a safe alternative to store nuclear waste. Now, going back to the very beginning part of, of the debate is why do we need nuclear power? And I think we've addressed that. And, and I think, you know, most Americans are on board with the understanding that it is good, clean power, provides a lot of great jobs. I mean, I, I, I've toured some of the plants in my district and I can tell you they are good, high paying American jobs. They take us on that road to energy independence. So understanding then that we need nuclear power, understanding that nuclear power plays an important role, uh, we have to talk about the unfortunate side of it, which is the storage. Uh, this this uh, Yucca Mountain has been, or is being created until it was zeroed out, uh, for the purpose of storing all this waste. And it just makes sense. You know, regardless of whether we build the, the nuclear reactors or reprocess them, we have to store this somewhere. Now, here's the question, though. If Yucca Mountain is technologically unable to store this fuel, then I would think the NRC, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, needs to come out and tell us, oh, it's technologically insufficient, and show us why. But they're not doing that, because the truth is it is technologically almost perfect, probably, as far as something like this would go. But the chairman uh, of the NRC has turned this into not necessarily what's the right thing to do for the industry, what's the right thing to do for the country, but what's the political thing to do, and turn the commission into a political commission. Uh, when you talk about this, when you talk about what the safety is of our country, I think for something very basic like this, and I, I think very evident, uh, I, I think we should take politics out of that. And I would think all my colleagues joining me today would agree that this uh, doesn't need to be a political issue. Uh, we need to have the NRC free of the political manipulations, and only President Obama, uh, frankly, can determine the fate of the chairman, and I hope he really takes that into account. I hope he takes into account what's the right thing to do for this country in the long run. Uh, so on top of that, look, we've got great jobs here. Uh, we have a need for nuclear power. Let's just complete the puzzle. Let's complete the puzzle, and let's put this stuff at Yucca Mountain. If my, uh, my colleague would... Uh continue to, to discuss this for a few minutes. He, you mentioned a fund in your kind of opening statements. Can you, for the benefit of the speaker, kind of explain where this fund come from and who's paying into it and what's it designed to do and, and really what's going on with it right now? Well, look, if you, if you pay for any kind of nuclear power, rate payers pay for this fund. Um, and so you have uh, constituents who sure. have been paying into this fund for for a long time, a 25 long time. years. And, and you know, and beyond that, let me, let me just, let me add this on top of it. For every year that we delay opening, I mean, Yucca Mountain's not going away. It doesn't disappear off the face of the earth. For every year we delay, it's costing us half a billion dollars more in what it's ultimately going to cost. So look, my constituents, your constituents, anybody that uses any aspect of nuclear power, which is almost everybody, has been paying for this. This isn't some giant uh, expenditure we're going to have to make out of the general fund when we don't have any money. This is already being funded. It's already being paid for. It only makes sense. And I, I think the colleagues that are joining me here today will say the same thing. This just makes sense. And part of this debate has uh, about the nuclear waste and where it's stored in the nuclear waste fund has been litigated in federal court. And the courts have said 
it is the responsibility of the national government to take this waste as part of the law, complying with the law. Obviously, we have no place to take it to. So we end up having the utilities store the high level of nuclear waste on site, and some of them, some have not asked us yet, some of them we are actually paying them to hold the waste that we're supposed to be holding. And you know, and if my colleague wouldn't mind, I'll just say, you mentioned it just a few minutes ago, this idea passed this body with a large majority. Uh, that to me seems like this is the will of the American people. It's not just some agenda or just some crazy pie in the sky idea. This is the will of the American people. And it's the responsibility of us to ensure that we're being safe. I mean, it just seems very basic to me. And so I'm having a hard time figuring out how and why politics has come into play to this. I mean, I think this is a debate we solved decades ago. But nonetheless, out in Washington, D.C., nothing surprises me in the 10 months I've been out here. Through the uh, gentleman from Illinois, the subcommittee chair. Uh, yeah, the gentleman uh, from the 11th of uh, Illinois, uh, let the gentleman from the 11th of Georgia uh, be somewhat instructive in regard to uh, the politics, because that's pure and simple uh, what it is. And, and of course, comments were made in regard to uh, uh, the chairman of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Uh, but the fact is, it's the Secretary of Energy. It's the Secretary of Energy, this Secretary of Energy, a Nobel laureate uh, in nuclear physics, who was essentially told by this administration uh, to tell the Nuclear Regulatory Commission that he was requesting that the license application for Yucca Mountain uh, be withdrawn from the NRC, taken out of their hands, the licensing process stopped with prejudice. Now, I'm not a lawyer, uh, but if uh, there are any lawyers in the body, uh, they understand when you withdraw something with prejudice, that means you can't bring it back up. So this $14 billion has been taken out of the ratepayers from, from the 50 states, or at least where these 103 reactors exist, they're, they're paying for this. Uh, and yet, uh, this political pressure on, on a gentleman who's got to be much, much smarter than any of us, Nobel laureate in nuclear physics, if I were him, as soon as that word came down to me and I got the memo from the White House, I would immediately resign over righteous indignation. And I yield back. Well, if I, if, if I could just say uh, quickly on that point, I think it's, it's Abby or Abby Mosini, acting director for licensing and inspections at the NRCC, at NRC made this remark. Some senior managers contributed to the manipulation of the budget process and information to apparently make sure that the Yucca Mountain project would be left unfunded even if the license application was still before the NRC. We were unprepared for the political pressure and manipulations of our scientific and licensing processes that would come with the appointment of the chairman in 2009. But fortunately, if I might uh, interject, the board of the NRC uh, rejected that, rejected what he recommended. Well, and, I, and I would just, uh, reclaiming my time, would kind of <laughs> close this circle, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, reminding uh, folks that the, uh, the chairman of the NRC, Mr. Yasko, used to work for now majority leader in the Senate, Harry Reid. And it's the majority leader in the Senate that is blocking the funding for the final scientific analysis. And it is the chairman of the NRC who used to work for the majority leader who is complicit in this, in this plan to shut down an investment of this country of $14.5 billion to comply with federal law that we passed in 1982. Now, in 1982, I was serving my country as an Army uh, lieutenant in, in West Germany before the wall came down. That is a long time ago. This has been the policy of this country for decades, and to have one man, one majority leader of the Senate, to put a halt to that 
that's why we're down here. Because he, he has raised this to a political debate, not a scientific debate. And because it's a political debate, what I'm attempting to do over a series of weeks is go around the country and just identify where is high-level nuclear waste stored. And would it be better for that waste to be stored underneath a mountain in a desert? The most investigated piece of property on the history of this earth. There is no piece of property that has been more studied than Yucca Mountain anywhere on the face of this earth. So that's why I have, and this is, I know this is hard for some folks to see, we're doing a tally as we go around the country to look at where are the votes? Where are the votes? And we have 27 people, bipartisan, who have said this is where it should go. Uh, from uh, Washington State, of course, Illinois, Wisconsin, Georgia, South Carolina, Arizona, Idaho, Utah, Wyoming, Maine, Vermont, Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana. We have new senators who have not had an opportunity to publicly either make a statement on it or cast a vote. Uh, from Merkley, uh, Feinstein was a no, but Fukushima Daiichi and the two nuclear power plants that are on the Pacific Ocean uh, in California and the high-level nuclear waste that's stored in ponds have her in a quandary uh, based upon the representation of that state. Tester in Montana, unknown, Lee of Utah, Brown, Massachusetts, Ayotte, New Hampshire, Sheehan, New Hampshire. Bonafide knows. Reed of Nevada, Heller of Nevada, Cantwell of Washington, Boxer of California, Bacchus of Montana, Kerry of Massachusetts, Sanders of Vermont. So it's a, a chance to use the bully pulpit, my position as chairman of the subcommittee, to help educate not only the floor, my colleagues, the speaker, um, those who are following us, that there's got to be a better way to store high-level nuclear waste than in pools next to Lake Michigan, next to the Savannah River, next to the Pacific Ocean. Surely there's a better place, and we know there is. 30 years of study and research, federal law says Yucca Mountain in the desert, underneath the mountain, is probably as good a place as you're going to find, at least in the United States. Well, and, I, and if the gentleman would, would grant me just a moment, I, I think when you said there's a mountain in the desert, or there's, I think, 131 locations as it exists today. And I can tell you I have four of those locations in the 11th district in Illinois. And uh, look, well, I, I believe nuclear power is safe, effective, cheap, efficient. But right now there's four nuclear storage waste facilities in a district. I mean, that's by the Medewin tall grass prairie. Uh, that's by populated areas, towns. And I think, look, I think the American people, I, I think the, the issue right now is they just don't fully have, haven't, and there's a lot of big issues going on in Washington, and this probably isn't the top of people's priority, but I would encourage anybody that's watching us right now that sees their senator's name on that board you had up earlier um, and says, hey, my senator is a yay, call and say thank you and encourage that senator. If they're unsecure, if they're unsure, if they have the uh, three yellow question marks, probably call that senator and say, hey, really would like to get you on board with safe nuclear storage. And if they're a nay, please call them twice. Because I tell you, we react to what we hear. And if the American people want safe storage, and I know they do, uh, then this is the right alternative. And I appreciate, again, my colleague from coming down for this uh, hour of discussion. Uh, on really what should be the national policy on high-level nuclear waste in this country. Didn't get a chance to go through all the areas, uh, but I'm going to end with Yucca Mountain versus the San Onofre nuclear generating station between L.A. and San Diego. This is one of the ones I'm talking about. How much nuclear waste is in the desert underneath the mountain? None. How much is on the Pacific Ocean right on the coastline? There's the photo. 2,300 waste rods on site. The waste is stored, would be stored 1,000 feet underground at Yucca. The waste is stored above the ground in pools 
right on the shoreline of the Pacific Ocean. The waist would be 1,000 feet above the water table here. Of course, as you can see from the photo, the waist is right next to the Pacific Ocean. Um, the waste at Yucca Mountain would be 100 miles from the Colorado River. Again, you can see the waves breaking <laughs> almost right up to the nuclear generating station uh, between LA and San Diego. Uh, I've gone to Massachusetts. I should have talked about Florida today. I've talked about Illinois, uh, DOE locations like uh, Washington State. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of nuclear waste defined differently all over this country. Let's do the correct public policy, get it at a single repository in the desert underneath the mountain. And with that, Mr. Speaker, I appreciate your diligence and I yield back the balance of my time.